Hey everybody, welcome back. So the previous time we talked about integrity and what that means in terms of the CIA triad. Now, today we're going to continue with the next or, or basically the third um, pillar of the triad, which is availability. And if you remember, we talked about um, our friend John, we talked about his box. So um, because the bad guys were basically not able to, um, uh, to compromise the confidentiality of the box, neither the um, integrity of the box, so they weren't able to steal what's inside of the box. They were not able to um, to, to to basically change it uh, in any way. So, so, so the last resort that uh, they are at right now is to try to compromise uh, the box's availability. And this is not how things necessarily happen in in, in the real world, but. Um, for the sake of, of this example, let's say that um, this is where we're at right now. So um, imagine that um, the bad guys basically um, took the box away or they um, put it inside another box and, and put a lock on that other box. Um, they did something in order to make this box unavailable to John. Um, this is the third um, the, the third way in which security could be compromised. And um, earlier we said that most of the times um, or, or most of the people when they think about security, they usually think about confidentiality and they usually forget about the, the other two pillars. But um, availability is just as important as the other two. Um, and we're going to give um, a few examples of why uh, exactly this is um, true. But um, let's say, uh, let, let's translate this into real world terms. Imagine that um, you have a website and maybe your website is gets pretty popular at some point and um, it's being visited or used by a lot of people on a daily basis. Um, so one of the most popular cybersecurity attacks is the so-called um, DOS attack or denial of service attack, which is basically what happens when you um, draw so much traffic at something or you basically generate so, so many requests um, towards something that you may get unavailable, right? Um, and in, in, in the example of the website, this basically means that, um, so let, let's just imagine for a second that this is a website that uh, you've just stood up, right? It's not your popular website. If you're able to generate enough requests towards it, you just make it unavailable because the website sits on a web server and this web server has a certain capacity. And the, the, the network pipe that um, goes to this web server also has certain um, limits, right? So if you're able to generate enough traffic and, and send enough traffic towards the web server, at certain point, it's not gonna be able to cope with it. It's not gonna be able to handle it. So it's gonna stop responding to every request that's being made towards it. And at this point, its availability, its availability is gonna be compromised, okay? So fast forward, this is your super popular website. Um, the same holds true for it, even though on a much bigger scale. Now, when a DOS attack is being performed on a large scale, then we're not talking about the so-called DDoS or distributed denial of service attack. And these attacks are extremely popular um, and they're pretty much happening all the time. And they um, are actually one of the... Um, let's say one of the nastiest attacks and one of the toughest attacks to handle because um, they're actually not that complicated to um, um, to do, but at the same time, they have some, they can have some pretty severe consequences on the, on, on their targets. Um, obviously they require a lot of resource to be, or to be um, performed, but um, a lot of the time, uh, most of the time, it's not, um, so it's not like 
the the the, the criminal the cyber criminal or the hacker whatever you want to call them it's not like they just purchased um 10,000 machines and they told these 10,000 machines hey um take this guy's website down by making millions of requests per second um actually it's usually it's, it's just like um um compromising a lot of devices out there a lot of computers iot devices are very a very popular target for um participation in ddos attacks and once the the, the bad guys compromise these all of these computers throughout the world at a certain point they just tell them hey start making requests towards this website like there's no tomorrow right um and it doesn't necessarily have to be a website in the um um, in the sense of, uh, let's say, a social media website, it could uh, just as well be any other online service, any other external facing application that um, the, uh, the the attacker could uh, initiate the traffic towards. So um, this is the, the, this this is how availability could get uh, impacted. And um, at this point, you might be thinking, okay, so what would be a good counter countermeasure against that um and keep in mind that availability is not necessarily just about um the things that somebody could um purposefully do in order to compromise uh, your security uh, it, it's also about um things like uh, natural disasters and uh, any other thing that could imp uh, impact the availability of um of your services so um one of the obvious answers to this question is, um, well, you could have um, high availability. Um, you could have your, let's say, application. You could, you could have your, your website, for example, um, sit it on more than one server. Um, and you can, you can have this. Um, so this is a very um, common and traditional way of doing things. You have, let's say, two web servers and you put a uh, so-called wall balancer in front of them. Um, and, and what the wall balancer would do is um, they would act as a, as a reverse proxy and they would start wall balancing the requests uh, among these two servers. And you could do this either in a um, in an active standby fashion where you, you know, let's say in this in the case of this picture here, you would have your web server number one being the, uh, the primary one, sorry, and your web server number two being the secondary one. So if number one goes down, number number two takes over. So, takes over. You could have that, or you could have um, basically a distribution of the traffic among uh, these two. Let's say in a round robin fashion. Uh, but the point is that uh, if you have such a uh, such an architecture in place, then um, if one of the servers goes down, the other one would would take over um, almost instantaneously. And ideally, these these two would be placed in different geographical locations um, so that you could um, also um, mitigate things like, uh, let's say, a natural disaster happening uh, to, to your data center number one um, or number two uh, and so on and so forth. Um, but again, there are ways in which you, you could uh, uh, address um, such uh, events. And um, like we said earlier, um, DDoS, a very popular way of compromising availability. Uh, keep in mind that one of the uh, most popular uh, types of um, DDoSing something is if you generate the so-called uh, SYN foot. And the SYN foot is basically, so um, if you're aware of the so-called freeway handshake, this is the way TCP communication works. Um, you have free requests going back and forth. So let's say you have um, sender and the receiver of the traffic. The sender sends request number one, receiver sends request number two, and then the sender uh, sends request number three. We're not gonna go into too much detail about that right now. I don't, I don't wanna make this um, too complicated at this point, but imagine what's gonna happen if the sender sends request number one, the receiver sends request number two the way it's supposed to be, but then the sender never completes the transaction by sending request number three. And without this transaction being completed, they cannot talk to each other. So the recipient is like gonna 
just hanging there waiting for that third request forever, but it's never going to come. Um, and if you send this first request, um, a, you know, a million times, for example, then you're going to create a million open um, sessions that are just going to hang, hang in there without ever being completed. And this is going to, um, this is going to exhaust your applications resources pretty quickly. So this is one of uh, the ways in which you could uh, impact the availability of an application. Um, there are other ways you could do it as well, but the point here is that availability is probably arguably the easiest one to compromise out of the free, you know, out of confidentiality, integrity, and availability. And uh, again, it's, it's it's something that uh, it's pretty. Um, it's not easy to um, to mitigate uh, the, these risks. Uh, you know the risk of uh, getting DDoSed or the risk of somebody backing your availability. So, um, so there you have it. This is the CIA triad uh, in a nutshell. Um, I, I hope this is uh, clear enough. Um, again, remember the key points that we talked about. Remember that uh, the free peers are equally important. Uh, remember that you might see some other ones being mentioned in um, other places, uh, but these three ones are the, the, the three core pillars of security, confidentiality, integrity, and availability. And if at any point you're having a, you know, you're having a trouble remembering what um, each one of them is about, or just um, thinking of, of an example of what this translates into in industry terms or in, in, in cybersecurity terms. Just try to think about the examples that we gave, try to think about um, the comparisons that we've made. And um, if this concept is clear to you, then um, you're going to have a good time um, with, with uh, all of the other material that uh, we are about to um, go into down the road. Okay, so uh, thank you very much. And I'll uh, see you in the next lecture.